Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a peanut butter and jelly mead. Let's get started. All right, so a couple years ago, I tried my very first peanut butter and jelly mead, and it's one that I think a lot of people have attempted. There's a lot of variations on it. Um, you know, places like Superstition Mead make their own. They have their own spin on it. The one I had was from a company I don't recall off the top of my head now. I wish I do, I did. But ultimately this recipe is one that lots of people have variations on. So this is my version I'm saying that because you might find someone else's with different things. And in fact, at the end of this video, I got two other friends who've made peanut butter jelly meads and we're gonna kind of taste test and see what the differences are between ours. Anyways, so here's my version. My recipe is a little bit interesting and um, I have some adaptations to mine, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you it. Uh, it was 192 ounces of grape juice, 1.5 gallons of water, so um, to raise that gravity. And that's uh, mostly because, uh, well, I could have supplemented all grape juice out, is what I'm trying to say. Two pounds of honey, two pounds of Maris Otter malt, which um, that's something that I used. I don't know that you have to use it exactly. It basically just adds a little more, uh, somewhat of a biscuity side, but also it is supposed to pronounce the peanut butter peanut side as well. Uh, five grams of Lauben EC1118. Um, I said the BM, BM 4x4 from Lauben might also do well. One teaspoon of Fermat O. Um, 14 ounces of grape juice concentrate, which that's in that secondary state. Um, after stabilizing, I also added 14 graham crackers, nine tablespoons of peanut butter powder, and eight ounces of honey to back sweeten. So that's the main recipe. Let's go ahead and open it up and I'm gonna tell you, um, all right, so here it is in all of its glory. Uh, this is a couple months old at this point. Yeah, it's, um, it's been a really hard, long road to figure out how to get this to work. And I don't even know that I've executed it that well, but it does have a lot, has a good-ish balance of peanut butter flavor. The grape is decently easy to get because it's grape. Um, it's been peanut butter and grape that's hard. And then the most difficult is the bread flavor. So that's where the graham crackers came in. It's very mellow. It's very smooth. It's like dangerously smooth. We're, we're decently high ABV, we're 10.5%. Does not taste like it. So I like it quite a bit. I'm curious to see what the other guys send me. So how did I make this? Well, I started, like I said, using that Maris Otter malt. I used it because some people recommended to use it for peanut butter flavor pronunciation or stuff like that. So I, did, I used that. I don't know that it's totally necessary, although it might've helped with the mouthfeel. Uh, my grape juice, I, I had to heat up the malt extract. So I used my water, boiled all that, uh, not boiled, but heated it up to where it mixed in. And then added my grape juice, added my yeast, which was that Lauben EC1118, and um, let that start fermenting. Took my gravity reading, of course, and we're sitting at about, it was, uh, well, 11, 1.100 to start for the gravity. Uh, added Fermate O to give it some nutrients because while grape theoretically has some nutrients in it i wanted to make sure that there was plenty and even malt has nutrients in it i wanted to make sure there was plenty so fermate o to help it out that went through the primary fermentation after the primary fermentation i decided okay now i'm going to pull it off and let it clear some let it clear up and i wanted to pronounce bready flavor so i did this in uh, like stages i added about six graham crackers to after the primary and that yeast the yeast kind of took some of the sugars from the graham crackers and fermented up ish again so a small amount of fermentation um which our gravity readings were here by the way and that also was supposed to add bready flavor in turn it adds some spices because graham crackers have spices that's just how it works um i i thought it did some to it it wasn't quite enough bready flavor. So what I decided from there was, okay, well now I want to stabilize it because I don't want any more fermentation. So I added potassium sorbate, potassium metabisulfite to this to halt fermentation. I then added my grape juice concentrate to uh, back sweeten, get more grape flavor to pronounce again. And 
Then I had the, the problem. Oh, I still don't have enough bready flavor. I still don't have enough peanut butter flavor. A lot of people in the universe have used PB2, which is, it's this peanut butter powder. This is what's important. This has no oil in it. Um, there are lots of ways to get peanut butter flavor, peanut flavor. Uh, some people will say to take peanuts and then boil the crap out of them to get all the oils out of them. Uh, or some people will say to boil them and use the water from it for flavor. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, you can't use real peanut butter because it has oils in it. This is oilless, so I used this. I put in nine tablespoons of peanut butter powder into this, added about eight more graham crackers on top of that, and I let those things kind of meld and do their thing. Afterwards, I was decently pleased. I think, uh, I think the graham cracker flavor has dissipated a little over time. I then decided, all right, it needs to be a smidge sweeter and added my honey. Here's the fun part. Final gravity on this thing, 1050. Some of you, if you don't know that, that's sweet. That is very sweet. It does not taste like 1050. It's definitely sweet, but it's not so overwhelmingly sweet that it is not enjoyable. So I quite, I, I think it's pretty good. I do feel like there's probably better ways to get some of these flavors. I would love to try the boiled peanut version where you boil the peanuts, use the water, um, or, you know, people will just use all grape juice. This is my version. I don't really know. I think it's pretty good. This, this next part of this video is what I'm most excited for. And I think you should be too. I wanted to kind of ask people, what did they do in order to make this mead? And so I have two friends who are going to join me in a second and we're going to, we are going to do a big bottle transfer and switch and taste one another's and talk about what we've done different, what we wish we had done and what we like about other people's. So I hope you uh, have enjoyed this part of it. Here goes the more fun tasting with two of my good friends. Here we go. All right, here we are for the grand finale tasting of not just one peanut butter jelly mead, but three jelly mead, peanut butter jelly meads. And uh, I have my friends Larry and Steve-O, or Steven, I don't know what you want me to call you here, uh, but they, they have also made peanut butter jelly meads. And uh, the whole point of this video is for you guys to see multiple processes, which I think we all went through a little bit of a different process. So uh, as we've, we've talked about, we're gonna start from our lowest ABV version to the highest. So Steve, would you like to tell us what you did here? Yeah, uh, and a little bit of backstory about this mead. Um, it was not my idea. <laughs> I did not <laughs> come up with doing this. Um, uh, we can all thank my fiance for this one. Um, she was drinking meads and I was very cocky saying I could make mead taste like whatever I wanted. And she was like, could you make it taste like a peanut butter and jelly? So I took her up on the challenge and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that. And, uh, I was tasting them around, tried superstitions, peanut butter, jelly crime. I tried uh -huh. the peanut butter and jelly mead from art of them. And the one thing I noticed that was, um, kind of lacking in my opinion was just, I, they had all the innards of a sandwich, but no bread character. Mm -hmm. So my, my goal was to bring the bread to the mead. Um, so I used a pound of the Maris Otter, um, and that I went ahead and just made a wart with, um, 12 pounds of blackberry blossom honey, uh, two gallons of, uh, Concord grape juice, 30 ounces of the PB fit peanut butter powder. Um, and I used Red Star Premier Rouge as my yeast for this. Um, did a big six gallon batch um, and one of those wide mouth fermenters because that peanut butter just sticks to the bottom. Oh man, I got a story for you in a moment. So I, I won't, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wide mouth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think the biggest part was just making the wort, you know. Um, I put a three, three gallon pot on the stove um, hit it with the, that strike water and, and just kind of made a, made a baby beer, basically. Um, helpful to have a beer background, but, uh, um, it was, you know, my strike water temperature was 156 degrees. So if somebody wants to replicate that, they just, you know, heat a gallon of, or heat about a gallon of water for about 156 degrees, put your pounds of Maris Otter into like a grain bag, 
Um, and that'll drop it down to about 152. Try to keep it right there for about an hour. Don't panic, you know, if the temp drops or raises, just kind of adjust accordingly. Um, you know, and then uh, in the last 10 minutes or so, I filled a smaller pot with a gallon of water. Um, and I brought that up to about 168, 170. Uh, and that was kind of my mash out uh, temp. So when that hour was over, I removed the bag from the first pot. I put it in the second pot to stop that conversion and to kind of also rinse those grains, kind of like a mini sparge too. Um, and uh, let the grain sit in there for about 10 minutes to, to kill the conversion. Um, and the first pot started bringing it up to a boil. Um, after that 10 minutes with the grain in the second pot, just went ahead, squeezed it, poured that into the first one, got that up to the boil. Uh, rolling boil for an hour uncovered. I am a fan of the the one hour, the longer boil. Um, and, you know, that that basically you, you get your hot break and uh, the boiling's underway. Um, that's basically how I did my wort. I just cooled it down as fast as possible there. Um, at, the, at the end when I was cooling it down is when I added my first 15 ounces of peanut butter. Um, so just stirred that in, mixed it up nicely, um, added my honey still when it was somewhat about a hundred degrees or so to when it's still hot to kind of, uh, use the, the wort and the water to kind of pull the honey out and rinse and, um, poured the grape juice in the gallon, uh, carboy, uh, poured, poured a gallon of grape juice in the carboy and then poured the rest of what I just made into the carboy after that, uh, and then just tossed in the, the yeasties. Um, pretty much after that, just let it ferment at 60 degrees, uh, and the normal mead kind of stuff after that, really, honestly. Um, I just kind of stabilized. I did add another 15 ounces of peanut butter powder a little later. Um, cold crashed it, because I didn't want to use clarifiers. Uh, you'll notice my mead looks like mud. <laughs> I mean, it's not the not the most clear, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was worried, man. I, I had never done one of these, and I was just worried that the peanut butter was going to fall out. I've never worked with peanut butter powder before. Um, so I just, I cold crashed it. 37 degrees, three days, um, and, and that's all I did to it. Um, okay. And... Uh, yeah, just back sweetened it with a little bit with uh, some blackberry blossom honey again uh, to bring it back to that 1.24 final gravity. And uh, yeah, I think it it achieved what I was setting out to do. Um, I have not tried this since September of last year, so this will be a fun I, one. I've had this before, but it's been a while because it was, it was with meat stampede stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so this was meat stampede entry. Um, I, I, did uh, really well. I don't know if I'll remember. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out if I remember. Um, so, all right. Well, let's let's do it. Yeah, I remember uncorking this for the first time, and it's smelling like the inside of a sandwich bag on a really. It does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, it'll be interesting to see our methods to get bread. Of course, peanut butter. I, I don't. I think we all might have approached peanut butter in the same way actually I don't, I don't remember what larry did okay larry did some he did he boiled okay never mind so i'm i'm on the same point as you as i i yeah. use the peanut butter powder um so yeah. but i got I'll bread in a different in a way minute. i'll talk about it in a minute i really didn't worry about the bread and i have my <laughs> reasons yeah i feel like, uh, like a sandwich the one i have yeah. now definitely the peanut butter is completely it, it's it's very faint if there it's like a whisper of what it used to be <laughs> just it's, a ghost of what it used to be this is and grapey it, and it's very, and very grapey. bready yeah yeah it kept the bread it kept the grape but the peanut butter is definitely kind of a, a ghost a memory yeah i on the palate the peanut butter has faded a lot which is wild to me because you used so much peanut butter powder and in a moment i'll i'll show you how much i used for my batch and um, I don't know if mine is faded or not, but the, I do feel like for whatever reason that peanut butter has uh, faded the most of anything. That breadiness is there. It's got a lot of body, which is really, really interesting. 
Yeah, and I think the the malt might help that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it might bring in some of that character. And if there is any peanut butter still left in there somewhere, <laughs> that might help. You definitely, is, you definitely get grape jelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely get grape jelly. Yeah, it's actually it's this is a it's not too bad. It's held up better than I thought it would. I was very worried about this, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> The body is really impressive to me with this being what six and a half percent in the to for it to feel so full without carbonation obviously that attests to you know talking about malt and probably some honey you know adding to that and of course your breadiness and everything um but it is impressive i, I like it i do wish there was a little more peanut butter to finish that element um, i think yeah. what makes this one so hard is it's it is three main components and also there's a nostalgic value to the peanut butter sandwich that literally everybody has because you grew up eating at least one in your life and so everybody's got their own like in, in some regards the same different ratios for peanut butter sandwiches some people are like i had heavy peanut butter some people were heavy grape jelly or whatever so yeah. This it's a tough when, when you open it though it 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 smells like a sandwich. It does. It smells like you opened up a paper bag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was my favorite memory with this um was uncorking that first bottle and just being blown away about the aromatics of it cuz it yeah. Hot hot day, you know, that plastic ba Ziploc bag you opened. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if um I wonder what chilling it would do to it. Uh huh. Well, um, yeah. Because we're we're drinking at room temp right now, and I, I wonder if the peanut butter's there and just not being like hidden a little bit. I yeah. think I think chilling it though might actually hide the peanut butter even more. Honestly, though, hmm. um, I don't know. I, I feel like it warmer might might help the peanut butter, hmm. but I don't, I don't know. Don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But it also I think it's could great. Be, all the peanut butter could be right there on the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's good. I do like, uh, I like your execution of it. And I think the, you, you achieved breadiness in such a manner that like I was seeking and like mine is my attempt at bready flavor was a, kind of close to yours, but also I went a little different route. So, um, all right, well, do we want to move on to mine? Do you have any more notes on, on Stevo's? It's, it's, um, you really get like a, like the bready, like maltiness towards the end. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. at the beginning, I, I, I think you get great, a little bit of peanut, peanut butter, and then bread. Yeah. Like, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, you kind of get the three flavors and almost like a roller coaster effect. Mm -hmm. You know, they all come one after another. Yeah, it's and it's like that nice, like sweet wheat loaf bread that you could just buy cheap at Safeway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nothing fancy. Oh man! All right, so I did something kind of close. I took a little inspiration because I remember you. Hearing your recipe and talk and you know talking about the Maris otter, and so I for mine I also use Maris otter, but in malt, uh, in, in liquid sorry form. So I mine was a three gallon batch. Used three pounds of uh, Maris otter, otter liquid malt. Uh, I I didn't quite boil it. I just put it in hot water enough to get it to going. Um, I used I think it was a total of about. Uh, a gallon of grape juice and then I topped a lot with water um, which I don't know if that was for good or bad I guess we'll find out and then uh, I for my bready flavor of course I was hoping the Maris Otter would kind of pronounce that um, I used graham crackers as as a big part of mine nice so in this three gallon batch there were I think a grand total of 14 whole graham crackers put in and I put them in I'm in like stages because I was trying to achieve more bready flavor over time. And then I used peanut butter, um, the uh, PB2. Now, my three gallons, oh, I got to find my PB2. It oh, is wild man. just how different that smells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're vastly different. Yours is I, a standard strength? Ten and a half. Mine, ten and a half. 
Okay, well, I can't, I don't know where I put my, my PB2, but I only used, um, I don't think I did ounces. I did like tablespoons worth. It might've oh. been like nine tablespoons of like PB2 powder. That was my. it, huh? Mm -hmm. which is wow. why when you're saying like that the whole thing i was like oh yeah, 30 ounces. <laughs> so i felt like i was using a lot and you know you joked about the the wide mouth carboy well i had done that in a three gallon regular you know carboy <laughs> and i read your message on the discord where you were like hey yeah make sure that you put this in a wide mouth and i was like scooping it in in that moment and i was like <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> luckily you know better luckily it came out just fine but i was just like i remember just like scooping it in going oh no i've doomed myself i just gotta get, keep going with it now luckily it came out but um so the pb2 not like nine tablespoons not a not too much um 14 gram crackers came back and added grape juice concentrate to add some more sweetness and then some honey of course to back sweeten um so no, Which honey was, type did you use for this? I believe I I just kept it pretty simple, and I used um, just clover honey. I didn't want to. I I ran out of blueberry blossom honey, and I really wanted to. Uh, I wanted to use that, but then I ran out of it. So. Oh, the color too! It's like a uh -huh. um, they're vastly different in color. Mm, it's a little like darker a brown. Yeah, I don't know if it's the, that's the malt portion also adding uh, so much coloring to it, but. Did you, you said you didn't boil, right? I didn't, I didn't go to a full boil, no. I just, I mean, it was like, it was close. I just got it to where it was. Well, that's nice and sweet. Completely different from the last meeting it's, we just had. <laughs> it's got, it's reminding me of, I, I can't put my finger on it, but some sort of candy. Mm. Um, and I cannot for the life of me think of what, like that would be almost like a, um like one of those like really cheap like the grape suckers oh yeah uh -huh. not, not in a bad way but but like smell it in particular on the on the nose yeah it's missing the the bready side i think um I, my attempt at using graham crackers i almost needed to use even more just like if i was going to really buy into the graham cracker thing just go crazy and throw as many as i could in i don't know how much um breadiness they have added which is why i think you're using more um actual malt um and like going through that whole process probably established more bready flavor and the peanut butter now that i've tasted yours to you know where where yours doesn't have a lot of peanut butter air quote mine is also kind of lacking in that regard yeah, yeah. Um, a lot more grape. It's a yeah. lot more grape like mine. Yeah, for sure. And I noticed the car. The the it, it, this has maris otter, but yeah. I noticed that it's the malt profile is different. Like this is a very like caramely kind of malt. Uh -huh. I feel like too, um, which is a little different um, than the the bready malt that I feel like I had in the other one. Um, still great. Tastes like a grape candy, kind of like a yeah. like. Larry was saying. Yeah, I definitely think if I'm adjusting the recipe, I'm adding way more peanut butter powder. I mean, just not being afraid of it as I was. And um, and then probably I would still try to go my route of the uh, graham crackers, but it seems like, like I would have to use three times as many as I did to really establish, which would be a lot. I mean, it'd be like two boxes of graham crackers for my little three gallon batch. So obviously that also creates sediment. There's some, you know, give and take there. I'm a big fan of malt. I would just end up using like, if I was trying to get a graham cracker flavor, I'd probably use like a honey malt or like a nice rose. Of, I'd still use a barley of some sort um, or a wheat that I did, kind of gives me that flavor. Oats, oats yeah, my, oats, yeah. I did, I did oats in one of my test batches for my key lime pie and I just ended up abandoning it. Um, because out of my four batches, it wasn't my favorite, mm. but yeah. I don't know. All right, Larry, what do we got for you? Uh, I was just going to say one more thing. It's, um, 
it's nostalgic in a completely different way. Yeah. This is the grape heavy sandwich. This is a uh, mom put a, a light layer of peanut butter on <laughs> and then a lot of, a lot of grape jelly. <laughs> yeah. So, so with mine, I, a, after meat stampede happened, mm-hmm. I, you know, I came in second with the key lime pie and I saw PB and J and I was like, I, I've got to, I've got to try something like that. And I, I had some leftover blueberries. Um, so I used three pounds of blueberries in primary and three pounds of honey. But instead of using peanut butter powder, I boiled roasted peanuts, planters roasted peanuts in water for like, I want to say it was three hours total, but two of those hours were in a pressure cooker. Mm. So basically I just boiled them until the peanuts didn't have any flavor left. Okay. Uh, And all of the flavor was in the water. And then I used that liquid as my brewing liquid. Um, And then it was, I didn't list what kind of honey it was, but back then I had a pail of blueberry blossom. So it was probably blueberry blossom. Um, And I used K1V1116. Uh, And in secondary, I added a bunch of honey, uh, some citric acid, because I felt like it needed a little bit of something, uh, grape juice concentrate, and a tiny bit of salt. What kind of grape grape juice did everyone use, I wonder, too? I I ended up being the great value. Sorry, I'm I'm struggling with my cork. My cork is uh, dried out, got a little problem. Mine was probably um, probably Kroger brand uh, grape juice concentrate. Probably, I'm not not a hundred percent sure on that. I um, I used that Welch's 100 percent Concord grape um, yeah. for mine. I was wondering if maybe that also leads to different flavors in our jelly profile that we've been yeah. Doing. So I I mean this is going to be interesting because it's got blueberry and grape. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I went. For the blueberry, mostly because that's just what I had. I-, I had some leftover blueberries, and I wanted to use them. So nice, yeah. What a way to do it in a in a jam mead. <laughs> yeah, and that was the other thing. That's why I um I don't have it written down here. Um, that's it's like sixteen and a half percent. Oh my goodness. Or something like that. I'm not 100% sure because this card only says the starting gravity. So I would have to do the math. Right on. Yeah, I've been very curious about yeah. boiling peanuts. Just under uh, 17%. Um, and doing it that route. And I went, that, I went that high because a lot of the times when you do like fruited meats that high, the the number one descriptor of fruited meat of fruited high alcohol meads is jammy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like, um, it, the, the peanuts is still is very light. I feel like in all three of them, the peanuts, it's just kind of harder to get. Um, which is kind of wild. Yeah. A lot and of them this, are jelly forward for sure. I was about to say this is mellowed out on the peanut too. Cause it, it definitely had more, when it was younger. Yeah. Peanuts do not age well, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we just need to double up on whatever we do. Yeah. <laughs> and then hope it'll dial itself back to where it needs to be. It'll be like the new IPA where it's like drink fresh across the can or bottle. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. This is good, man. Uh, I love that we have them in different strengths. And they're all. They're all similar, but unique in their own way. Like, I feel like they're all very well executing the same thing, but just they each have their own little take on it. Um, Yeah. Uh, And so the other reason I went with blueberry is because, um, you know, the superstition one, the peanut butter jelly crime is blueberry. Oh, really? I'm not. Yeah. Okay. That would, that would make sense. I think there's blueberries on the label somewhere. There might be. Yeah. Yeah. And the art of them one, um, that might also be 
berry and not grape too. Uh, the one out because the guy from Art, the guy from Superstition left and went to start his own meadery in Washington. Oh, and, did he? Yeah, and he he has a peanut butter and jelly one as well. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it, um, but it's it's named after a bird. Um, a sharp shinned hawk. Is there? It's blueberry and peanut butter. Yeah, so they do blueberry as well, just like superstitions. <laughs> It makes sense since he was the guy that wrote the superstition recipe. Oh my gosh, that cork. That was hey, rough. Back. Jesus. It's pulling us. Finally, I was able to get, get sorted out. Sorry. All right. I'm here and I will actually taste this now now that I'm not trying to frantically figure this out. Ooh, that is very different. I, I did hear your conversation as we were going along. Um, you can definitely tell it's much higher, like body wise. I mean, it has, uh, Sivo, yours has the big body. This has big body, but you can feel it has booziness too. Yeah, there's a little bit of alcohol in there that you can kind of pick up. Let you know it's an adult's, adult's beverage. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. I get the like roastedness from the peanut at the very, very, very end. Yeah. But other than that, I don't. I also don't get a lot of peanut, which is unfortunate because it did when it was young. And the other thing with doing it with boiling the peanuts that I didn't mention earlier, um, you got to get the fat out of the liquid before you start. Oh, Oh, yeah. yeah. So I froze it. But honestly, if I were doing it again, I would do it fridge temp and then either rack underneath it or try and scoop it off. Um, because it was a pain to get the fat off the top when it was frozen. Oh, okay. It's good to know. I think we, what's interesting about this is obviously three different methods to go about this. And I mean, it's, it's apparent in ultimate, um, tasting notes. Obviously we, we have ended up with three different results, but we've also hit three different, like kind of each spectrum of the peanut butter jelly, like better in some ways. Like, I feel like, uh, like you guys, as far as, uh, bready flavors concerned, I feel like Steve, Steve has like done it really well. I mean, he's achieved a lot of that clear peanut butter, open the sandwich bag, you know, we talked about, um, this has like a, the body and viscosity. And I know we're not like the peanut butter flavors kind of, we talked about how it's faded some, but it, when you think of the, the thickness that a peanut butter jelly sandwich has, like this yeah. really achieves Larry's achieves a lot of that. And then you have, for me, like I get, I get the, um, you know, it's blueberry, but it's not, it's still got some brightness to it. So it's still got the jammy side. Yeah. And there's, there's grape juice concentrate in it too. So it's, it's both. Yeah. Yeah. This is very reminiscent of, um, of, as you said, superstitions, peanut butter, jelly crime. I know I've had that thing before. It's really, really good. Um, now I think you guys, I am going to take notes from what you've done because you guys have clearly achieved better, uh, flavor profiles in this than I have. I, I feel like mine has fallen flat in a lot of ways and, and I, I don't think it's a bad thing to um, have, I mean, for me, it failed, <laughs> you know, and not achieve the, the flavor profiles. This is my first time doing this, or second time. The first time I cheated. I used the, the Amaretti syrup and then grape juice, uh, or uh, yeah, it was grape juice, but didn't back sweeten, didn't even try to go for bread. So yeah. this is a step step towards the future of trying to get better at this brew. I think, so I, I don't want to, you know, BC's working on one now, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like it's somewhere in the middle of these. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's high ABV Mm -hmm. using boiled roasted peanuts, but also using malt. Yeah. Yeah. And I honestly think that's probably the way to go. Totally. He sent me his malt bill um, earlier this week and was like, hey, what do you think of this malt bill? <laughs> and I'm like, like that looks great. <laughs> He's using way more than Maris Otter. He's using all kinds of uh-huh. stuff going on in there. It'll be a great mead when it's done. He's also using twice the amount of peanuts I used. 
Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about well, that. We, yeah, we found peanuts fade, so use as many peanuts as possible. Well, I, I hope that people who have listened and watched this kind of get some inspiration on, on ways to do this. And um, I think everyone is going to have um, – a preferred peanut butter jelly sandwich. And so if you are hearing this going, man, I want more peanut butter flavor. You know, we're, we're talking about using obviously different methods, kind of double down on how much peanut you're using. Or if you want more grape, you know, double down on that. Or you want more bready side. Obviously I think Maris Otter and doing the whole mash build and that stuff is the way to go. So there's lots of avenues and ways to do this, but I appreciate you guys uh, sharing your brews with me and allowing me to, to compare and contrast because I, I feel motivated to go try this again and hopefully um, take these ideas and make an even better version than I have presented today. So thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you, man. Cheers. Inspector, Mr. Mo. Hi, Mr. Mo. Inspector, Mr. Mo. Fishing, eh?